So, this is the fifth lecture on the design of the weld joints uh, and uh, this uh, lecture will be based on the uh, fatigue uh, fracture of the weld joints. Uh, in the previous uh, lecture uh, uh, on the design of the weld joints for uh, static and dynamic loads, uh, we have seen the step by step methods which are commonly used for uh, designing the weld joints uh, under the static loading and the dynamic loading. Uh, now, you say uh, in the uh, real life, uh, we know that uh, the engineering components uh, including weld joints are uh, frequently subjected to uh, the fatigue loads, the loads which uh, uh, whose magnitude is change uh, with the time and uh, direction also can change. So, the load uh, whose magnitude changes uh, uh, and uh, direction changes with the time uh, is uh, uh, termed as the dynamic load or the um, fatigue load and uh, while in case of the static loading, uh, this uh, the magnitude and the direction of load largely remains constant. Uh, but when uh, an engineering component is subjected to such kind of the fluctuating loads, uh, then the life of the component is very adversely affected because uh, a very premature failure of the such component take place during the service. So, uh, that, uh, in this uh, presentation, we will try to explore that uh, what is the mechanism of the fatigue fracture which leads to the significantly reduction in the life of the component under the fatigue loading and uh, uh, what are the welding related aspects and uh, the parameters that affect the fatigue life of the weld joints. Uh, so, that is what uh, will be focused in this uh, presentation mainly. Uh, so, the in it will be started uh, uh, means we will be starting with the introduction of the fatigue fracture, the stages of the fatigue fracture and then factors affecting the stages of the fatigue fracture like uh, uh, like surface characteristics, uh, the material characteristics and uh, uh, the loading conditions. And uh, th thereafter, we will try to see that how the welding related uh, uh, parameters and welding related aspects affect the uh, fatigue life uh, of the component. To understand this, uh, uh, we need to see first the what is fatigue. Uh, so, uh, uh, we know that uh, in real service, the, uh, the load which uh, act on the component mostly fluctuates in terms of the magnitude and the direction. And uh, when uh, such kind of loads uh, act on the component, life is, life is very adversely affected as compared to the performance of the component under the static load conditions. So, when an engineering component subjected to the fluctuating load which is fluctuating in magnitude and the direction uh, suffers badly in respect of the life because very premature failure of such components takes place. So, this adverse effect uh, of the fluctuating load fluctuation on the life of the mechanical component is called fatigue. So, uh, basically the reduction in life of the component when it is subjected to the fluctuating loads is termed as a fatigue and this life is found to be significantly lower than that is offered under the static uh, loading conditions. So, um, to understand it uh, better, uh, we will we'll try to see the schematic diagrams, say whether uh, it is an engineering component uh, like a simple uh, a cylindrical component subjected to a particular magnitude of the load, say 100 uh, uh, kilo Newton, uh, both the sides. So, uh, the magnitude uh, of this load is say the tensile load of 100 kilo Newton is acting on this component and uh, if the uh, load resisting cross sectional area is of the 100 mm square, then it will uh, result in uh, the stress which will be uniformly distributed tensile stress which will be uniformly distributed across the section and that can be obtained directly from this uh, uh, 100 into the, uh, so this will be in Newton divided by the 100 mm square. So, this will be cancelled and what will have 100, uh, sorry 1000 Newton per mm square. So, this is equal to 
the thousand MPa. This stress is constant when a fixed load is applied, but if uh, instead of maintaining this load, if uh, we fluctuate it from uh, 10 to 100, in that case the stresses will also be varying from the 100 to 1000. So, this kind of fluctuation or variation which will remain say the minimum tensile load, the F1 minimum tensile load of the 10 kilo Newton and the F2 maximum tensile load of 100 kilo Newton. If the load is fluctuated like this, then it will result in uh, the significant fluctuation in the stress tensile stresses which are acting in the component uh, from 100 to 1000 MPa. So, this this uh, this we can say the minimum stress 100 MPa and maximum stress 1000 MPa. So, we difference of this we can say stress range. Yeah, so, the component is being subjected to a range of stresses of 900 MPa. So, such a huge uh, fluctuation will be existing in this component. So, this is the difference in case of uh, that static loading the load magnitude remains fixed, but when uh, the load magnitude fluctuates then a component is subjected to fatigue. Now, depending upon the nature of the uh, the type of the load and, uh, and the variation in the magnitude of the load various types of the load patterns uh, uh, are available. So, here we can say this uh, y axis shows the load magnitude and axis axis shows the time. So, say the load fluctuation is simply say increasing like this increasing gradually to the peak value then coming down to the 0 then increasing to the peak value then coming to the 0. So, here load fluctuation is from the 0 to some maximum value. So, in this case if the load is tensile here on the above this line and below and compressive below this line. So, we can say that load is of the tensile in nature varying from the 0 to maximum value. There may be another situation where this is the time scale and the load is fluctuating say the top side we have the tensile and the bottom side we have compressive and the fluctuation is from tension to tension say from one magnitude increasing then decreasing then increasing and then decreasing. So, the fluctuation is taking place from some low value to the high value and in this case the value of the load when it is minimum is not 0, but it is uh, on the higher side. There may be another situation where the load can fluctuate from means the tension to the compression side. In this case say one typical kind of the load variation which is observed is like say uh, for one half cycle it is tension and another half cycle it is in compression zone. So, this kind of sinusoidal variation in the stresses uh, uh, where the stresses are tensile in nature for one half of the cycle and they are compressive in the another half of cycle. So, here the load will be not just the magnitude of the load will be fluctuating, but its nature will also be changing from the tension to compression. When any engineering component subjected to such kind of fluctuation in magnitude in terms of the nature and the magnitude, the life of the component is very adversely affected. So, that reduction in life uh, of the component when it is subjected to such a kind of fluctuation is uh, termed as fatigue. Uh, now, uh, this uh, kind of fatigue failure takes place uh, in the different stages for failure to take place it is a material whether it is a welded component or any engineering simple engineering component having the uniform cross section component can fail under the in both the cases. Say this is one typical component without any discontinuity and uniform cross section and this is the and is subjected to say load fluctuation from P1 to P2 in both the sites. And similarly, if we take another component which is welded. So, welding is done say along this section, this is the line of the weld and again it is subjected to the same uh, uh, the kind of fluctuation in load from P1 to P2.
So, in both the cases fatigue fracture can occur in both the cases. So, uh, uh, and for that uh, what is required requisite for fatigue fracture to take place in the second case uh, in, in both the cases is that uh, the, the, the failure of uh, is that uh, uh, it, it should pass through the th three stages. So, the stages which are required for fatigue failure to take place are the nucleation of crack stage where first the crack will nucleate, the second is stable crack growth stage and third the sudden fracture stage. So, whether the component is very smooth and of the uniform cross section or it is having the discontinuities and a sudden uh, uh, change is there in cross section, both the components can fail under the uh, fatigue loading, but the number of cycles which will be required, number of the load cycles which will be required for failure to take place that can vary significantly. So, uh, but in any case for fatigue failure, the, uh, 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 for a fatigue failure component will be passing through these um, three stages. So, for the first stage in case of the smooth component, uh, some sort of the crack will nucleate at any point where uh, stress ridges are present uh, either in form of defect or in form of surface irregularity like the greater roughness. While uh, in other cases uh, where already some sort of discontinuity is present, those discontinuities and the sudden variation in the cross section will be acting as a the uh, stress ridges and they will be facilitating uh, the easy nucleation and growth of crack. So, how, what is the difference in uh, how uh, uh, the fatigue life will be affected uh, in the uh, two cases when one is having the discontinuities and the sudden changes in the cross section and uh, another is having very uniform cross sectional area and smooth finished surface. So, how the fatigue life will be affected in the two cases when it is uh, um, subjected to the fatigue loading that will be seen through this uh, uh, presentation. So, here uh, what is the reason behind uh, why uh, the fatigue life is reduced, the fatigue life uh, uh, under the fatigue loading is uh, reduced because uh, because under these under the fatigue load conditions very premature failure of the component takes place and this premature failure um, occurs because of the easy nucleation of the crack and the fast growth of crack especially in the areas where stress ridges are present and uh, this uh, this is stress ridges uh, may be present in form of the abrupt change in cross section or some sort of discontinuities are present in the component or in the weld joint and these discontinuities may be in form of the cracks and the hole so important thing is that uh, when the component is subjected to the fatigue loading very premature failure takes place because in these under these conditions cracks nucleate easily and they grow at a faster rate especially in the especially in the areas of the high stress concentration and these are the preferred areas where stress concentration can exist so as as i said for fatigue failure to take place certain stages are uh, are uh, there and uh, these stages will be occurring in sequence one by one. Then these three stages, there are three stages for fatigue failure to take place of the mechanical component. One, the nucleation stage of the crack, where crack, if it is not present, then it will be nucleated first. Or if uh, some sort of discontinuities are present, they are acting as a, uh, the acting like a crack. Then the crack, their growth will start directly. The second stage is the stable crack growth zone where crack will be growing in very stable manner slowly and this is the most useful part of the fatigue life and this, this stage will be offering the most useful part of the fatigue life of the component and in the third stage when the cross sectional area of the component is reduced to the greater extent catastrophic failure uh, takes place. So, to understand this we will be going through uh, uh, one very systematic uh, 
approach, uh, we know that when any component is subjected to the fatigue loading, first uh, uh, the areas of the high stress concentration cracks nucleate. So, it will require first a few, uh, few number of the load cycles for nucleation of the crack, then few number of cycles required for a stable of the, uh, for a stable crack growth and thereafter some number of cycles will be required for completion of the third stage that is the catastrophic failure. So, uh, the algebraic sum of the number of load cycles required for completing each of the stages will determine the total number of cycles required for fatigue failure and that will indicate the fatigue life of the component. So, all the factors that affect uh, that can uh, delay uh, the number of cycles required for completion of the any stage uh, that will help in improving the fatigue life of the component. For example, uh, if the certain factors can delay the nucleation stage, uh, then they will be helping in improving the fatigue life. Similarly, the factors that uh, delay the completion of the second stage, they will also be helping in increasing the fatigue life and likewise the third stage. So, the number of load cycles required for completing the each of, of the above three stages of the fatigue eventually will determine the fatigue life of the component. Say one component cross section uh, section of cross section of one component having very smooth surface will be come under the fatigue load conditions will be coming across these three stages in stage 1 for very fine in is, uh, is smooth at, at the very smooth surface first the crack will be nucleated in the stage 1 and thereafter that crack will be growing uh, step by step uh, through the number of uh, load cycles and uh, will be getting uh, these uh, uh, these concentric circles marks where center will be the crack nucleation, the location where crack has uh, nucleated and these marks are termed as the beach marks and these marks are the typical feature of the fatigue uh, fracture uh, and these uh, and uh, the stable crack growth rate will be occurring in the second stage and this portion of the life means the, the number of load cycles that will be required for completing the second stage that will be um, contributing to the most portion of the fatigue life uh, while uh, uh, when the, uh, the uh, due to the growth of the crack in the second stage when the load resisting cross sectional area is reduced to the greater extent then uh, the sudden fracture uh, it takes place in the third stage. So, this is the uh, this uh, the shaded portion indicates the sudden fracture uh, zone uh, of the third stage. Uh, so, the sum uh, means a, a, load, a few load cycles about 10 to 20 percent of the fatigue life uh, load cycles are required for completing the nucleation stage and about 60 to 70 percent of the load uh, fatigue life goes in the stable, stable uh, crack growth and uh, lastly about 10 to 5 to 10 percent of the load cycles will be required uh, for completing the third stage. So, uh, it will be important to see that how uh, the load cycles required for completing the uh, each stage can be achieved. Say this is very smooth and the finished component subjected to the load fluctuation. So, uh, under the load fluctuation uh, say the surf each surface even if it is a smooth will have uh, some uh, sort of the irregularities, uh, these irregularities may be at the micron level. So, wherever the deep valleys are present, those areas under the uh, load fluctuation will be showing some minor stress localization and at these uh, locations uh, very uh, micro level uh, deformation will be occurring by slip. So, micro level deformation occurring uh, at the surface by slip, this will be uh, facilitating the development of the, uh, um, the crack after the large number of the cycles, a uh, large number of the load cycles. So, the important thing when the load fluctuates by the micro level deformation uh, uh, occurring by the slip near the surface layers will be leading to the development of the uh, crack. So, uh, number of load cycles re required for development of this crack will be constituting to the uh, stage 1 of crack 
nucleation. So, all those factors that um, help in reducing the deformation, micro level deformation by slip at the surface, they will be delaying the stage 1 if the surface is smooth. So, this is the uh, situation or this is the case when the surface is uh, very smooth. The second stage is one when the engineering component is having either some sort of the geometric discontinuity or it is made, it is having the weld joint which are bound to have, which are as you usually have one or other kind of the discontinuity. So, these areas where either geometric discontinuity is present uh, uh, due to the design requirements. So, these areas will be acting as a areas of the high stresses. So, in these uh, areas of the high stresses where stress localization is taking place, crack will be able to nucleate easily and thereafter their growth will start. So, the nucleation stage is achieved earlier and easily uh, in case uh, of those components where either weld joints are present or uh, they are having some sort of the uh, um, uh, geometric uh, 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 means variation in cross section due to the uh, design requirement in the component in form of the key slots, holes or some other variation in cross section of the component. So, these areas will be, uh, will be very sensitive for easy nucleation and growth of the cracks. So, the weld joints and the other com and the components having some sort of uh, the variation in cross section and uh, due to the design requirements, they will be subjected to the easy nucleation or uh, of the crack in the stage 1. So, uh, if, we, if we consider this the nucleation stage, then, uh, then what are the factors that affect the, the nucleation stage of the fatigue fracture. So, uh, the factors affecting the fatigue life at the each stage uh, like the each uh, stage of the fatigue uh, ranging from the crack nucleation to the third catastrophe, third stage that is of the catastrophic unstable fracture is controlled by the different properties. So, properties that uh, predominantly affect the each stage of the uh, fatigue fracture includes the surface roughness, mechanical properties and the metallurgical properties of the component. So, the surface nucleation stage of the fatigue fracture is governed by uh, the following surface properties uh, like the surface roughness. In general, surface if the surface roughness is more than due to the presence of the deeper uh, peaks and uh, higher uh, peaks and the deeper valleys, the nucleation of the crack will be easier as compared to the situation when the surface is, is smooth. Uh, the surface hardness, uh, higher surface hardness, higher yield strength will reduce the micro level deformation by the slip which uh, will be facilitating the easy nucleation of the crack in the uh, stage 1. Similarly, the low ductility, uh, high ductility will be promoting the uh, micro level deformation by the slip and thus it will be facilitating the, uh, the nucleation stage. But uh, if, if we smoothen the surface, increase the hardness, increase the yield strength and reduce the ductility of uh, the uh, material present at the surface layer, then uh, these things will be uh, discouraging the nucleation of the crack by the micro level um, uh, deformation uh, through the slip mechanisms. So, if it is required to improve the fatigue life by delaying the crack nucleation uh, stage, then surface is finished and uh, the hardness, yield strength uh, uh, are improved and ductility is reduced. So, as far as the surface nucleation stage by the slip, we know that uh, the cracks on the surface of the smooth engineering component are nucleated by the micro level deformation occurring due to the slip under the influence of the external loads and repeated fluctuation of loads results in the surface irregularities of the micro level which act as a stress raiser and the site for the stress concentration continued slip under the fluctuating load cycle subsequently produces crack like discontinuities at the, uh, at the surface and it is believed that the first uh, crack nucleation stage takes about 10 to 20 percent of the total fatigue life cycles of the engineering component. So, the factors that can be used to reduce the nucleation stage, crack nucleation is uh, nucleation is crack nucleation is stage. Uh, from the uh, mechanism of the fatigue crack nucleation, we know that uh, uh, 
uh, it is based on the micro level deformation by the slip. So, all the factors that can uh, reduce this uh, micro level deformation by slip, they will be helping in reducing the um, crack nucleation and delaying the crack nucleation stage. So, like the surface irregularities increasing the stress concentration. So, reducing surface irregularities will uh, help in uh, uh, will help in um, uh, delaying the uh, surface nucleation stage and uh, the reducing the ductility and uh, increasing the yield strength and hardness. Um, these uh, will uh, be helping to uh, delay the nucleation stage. So, uh, for enhancing the fatigue life attempts are made to improve the surface finish so as to reduce the stress concentration due to the surface irregularities uh, and this can be done by the grinding, lapping and the polishing uh, of uh, to the surface of the component and increasing the surface hardness and yield strength so that uh, the micro level deformation by the slip can be reduced and uh, reducing the ductility using approaches like uh, the short pinning, carburizing, uh, hard and uh, nitriding and other treatment. So, the surface hardness and yield strength and reduction in ductility can be achieved through these approaches. Uh, in the nucleation stage in case of the weld, nucleation stage in the welded joints can be influenced by the presence of surface irregularities which are usually present uh, in the weld in form of the weld ripples and the weld discontinuities are also uh, usually present in form of uh, uh, the crater, uh, the cracks and uh, the inclusions, porosities etcetera and these act as a stress stages and apart from these uh, the weld joints uh, most of the time have the residual stresses which can promote or discrease the, the crack nucleation stage depending upon the kind of the external loading is there. For example, the tensile residual stresses will be facilitating the crack nucleation, crack nucleation stage if the external loading is a, of the tensile in nature while the compressive residual stresses will be discouraging the crack nucleation stage under the identical conditions. Uh, and uh, because of uh, the above uh, reasons uh, like uh, the, uh, the presence of the uh, 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 because surface is rough uh, as the, um, the weld joints in as welded conditions have the lot of surface irregularities. They have discontinuities which has act as a stress razor and further these also have the residual stresses. So, all these factors um, facilitate the easy nucleation of the crack under the fatigue conditions and therefore, um, the fatigue joints frequently offer the poor fatigue life as compared to that of uh, the respective base metals. And uh, this is the reason why the welding of the base metal lowers the fatigue life of the component as high as uh, the 90 percent of their base metal. Uh, means the reduction in life uh, uh, can be up to the 90 percent of the uh, life of the component. So, uh, and this uh, the extent of the reduction in, in the life of the component is governed by the type of the weld joint which is being used like uh, the butt joints offer better fatigue life than the fillet joints, the loading conditions whether it is tensile or compressive and the surface conditions of the weld like the presence of ripples, discontinuities and other form and the residual stresses uh, at the surface of the weld. So, due to um, these uh, typical features related with the weld joints, the fatigue life of the weld joint is found to be significantly lower than and their base metals. Then the nucleus, uh, the stable crack growth stage, uh, we know that uh, the cracks uh, uh, which either have been developed in the uh, nucleation stage or these were present uh, right from the beginning in form of the weld discontinuities or other form of discontinuities, these cracks in the initial stages may be of the propagating type or non-propagating type depending upon the loading conditions. We know that the crack can be there for longer duration without, a prop without any propagation if the fluctuation in load is uh, limited. So, uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, to have the crack uh, uh, of the propagating type, it is necessary that uh, whatever crack is present, there must be sufficient fluctuation in the load magnitude, otherwise crack can become a non-propagating kind also. So, a crack nucleated in the stage 1 may be propagating or non-propagating type which in turn depends whether there is enough load fluctuation or not in a given material. So, the, if the fluctuation is very limited despite of having uh, the crack uh, present or nucleated in the initial stage, it can become non-propagating type if the fluctuation in the load is limited. 
then a fatigue loading uh, uh, with the low uh, stress ratio especially in case of the uh, fracture uh, tough material may lead to the existence of the non uh, propagating crack. So, uh, so uh, when the load fluctuation is very limited uh, that is uh, shown by the low stress ratio um, uh, that is shown by the high stress ratio and um, uh, if uh, uh, the material is also very fracture tough then uh, the, the crack uh, present may be of the non propagating type. So, however, the growth of uh, uh, the propagating crack is uh, primarily determined by. So, if the crack is propagating type, then its growth rate will be affected by the stress range, the maximum stresses. So, um, uh, we know that the higher is the fluctuation, greater will be the stress range. Uh, so, the greater will be the crack growth rate, maximum stresses. Higher is the uh, maximum stress, uh, greater will be the crack uh, uh, growth rate and uh, material properties like ductility, yield strength and hardness. Uh, if the crack is propagating in, in the metal system, if it is ductile, then it will be uh, discouraging the crack growth because crack tip will be blunting with the ductile materials, while the low ductility material pro pro uh, promotes the crack growth rate. Similarly, the yield strength, uh, high yield strength materials promote the crack growth rate and high hardness materials also promote the crack growth rate. So, the material properties significantly affect the crack growth stage. To, to uh, reduce the crack growth rate, it is necessary that uh, or to delay the crack growth stage, it is necessary that ductility is high, yield strength is low and material hardness is low. So, at the same time, stress range is also low and the maximum stresses are on the lower side especially when the load is of the tensile type. Uh, then my microstructural characteristics also affect the crack growth stage uh, in respect of the microstructural features like the size of the grains, their shape and distribution. The large size means the coarse grains and uh, then of the needle shape uh, for the higher crack growth as compared to the uh, finer grains and uh, uh, the spherical. Uh, or the equaxed uh, green uh, structures uh, resist the uh, crack growth and thereby they delay the crack growth stage um, and thus they help in improving the fatigue life of the component. So, as far as the effect of uh, the above parameters on the fatigue life is concerned and, and uh, uh, so that is what we will be uh, seeing here in the uh, as far as the stress range is concerned and increase in stress range in general increases the uh, rate of the stable crack growth and increase in rate of the stable crack growth will be decreasing the fatigue life of the component because it will be decreasing the number of load cycles required for um, the completing the second stage of the fatigue failure. And uh, then material properties like increase in yield strength and the reduction in ductility increases the crack growth rate due to the reduction in the extent of the plastic deformation that will be experienced by the material ahead of the crack tip under the influence of external load. So, because of uh, the limited deformation of the crack tip, stresses will be more localized and the stresses will be more concentrated at the tip of crack and that they will be facilitating the uh, growth of the crack easily and that is why the material of the high yield strength and low ductility offer the high crack growth rate as compared to the low yield strength and the high ductility material. So, um, the increased uh, deformation and blunting of the crack tip lowers the stress concentration and thereby they reduce the crack growth rate. So, a combination of the high yield strength and low ductility causes the limited plastic deformation at the, at the crack tip which in turn results in the high stress concentration and the high stress concentration at the crack tip produces uh, the rapid crack growth uh, and so the reduced number of load cycles required for completing the second stage. All the factors uh, uh, thus if, if you want to see the combined effect of all the factors, so all the factors associated with the loading pattern and the material which increase the stable crack growth rate eventually will be lowering the number of cycles required for uh, fatigue fracture of the component. So, uh, so, whatever loading characteristics, characteristics of the load and uh, uh, the material characteristics uh, which are affecting the either nucleation stage or the stable crack growth uh, or the crack growth stage and they will be uh, affecting the fatigue life. So, if the, the all those all those factors related with the load pattern and the material which uh, increase the stable crack growth rate, they will be decreasing the uh, life of the component under the fatigue conditions. 
Then the third stage uh, in which a very unstable crack growth uh, takes place, the third stage of the fatigue failure corresponds to the unstable rapid crack growth causing the abrupt fracture and this uh, stage commences only when the load resistance, load resistance cross sectional area of the engineering component is reduced to the great extent and due to uh, the stable crack growth uh, and this, uh, this reduction in cross sectional area occur due to the growth of the crack in the second stage and when this reduction in cross sectional area uh, takes place to such an extent that uh, it becomes unable to withstand another the external load, the sudden fracture takes place. So, to understand this we, uh, we can schematically say another diagram here we can see that under the fatigue load conditions uh, say in this component and uh, due to the load fluctuation in the initial stage crack has nucleated and then it will be growing, growing gradually. So, gradually as the crack will grow uh, there in this, uh, this was the stage 1 is very limited of say 10 to 15 um, or 20 percent of the load cycle, uh, fatigue life cycles and then the stage 2 the st very stable and slowly the crack will be growing. With the growth of this crack uh, there will be a reduction in load resisting cross sectional area. So, say this is the uh, stage 2 in which stable crack growth rate has taken place and this uh, growth of crack in this stage 2 will continue until this load resisting cross sectional area is reduced to such an extent that this area is unable to take up the external load which is acting uh, on the component and, and this is a sudden fracture uh, takes place. So, those metal systems which are very fracture tough and very uh, uh, then those fracture tough material will allow the growth of the crack to the greater extent while the materials which are not very fracture tough after the nucleation stage and the propagation of crack to the limited extent the sudden fracture can take place. So, even when the a lot of load resisting, load resisting cross sectional area is left for the stage 3 very um, the sudden fracture can take place earlier. So, in that case the growth of crack in the second stage will be very limited as compared to the first case when the fracture toughness of the material was high. So, depending upon the uh, capability of the material to withstand under the um, uh, growing crack uh, that will dictate how far crack will grow in the second stage before the premature failure and abrupt failure uh, takes place corresponding to the stage 3. This is what we can see in the uh, cross section point of view if we try to see say this is the cross section. So, in the initial stage say crack is nucleating in the stage 1 then it will be growing gradually like this if, if this is what is seen from the side view then we will be able to see that the crack is growing in a very stable manner and when this load resisting cross sectional area is reduced to such an extent that it is unable to take up the external load sudden fracture takes place. So, this corresponds to the third stage and this corresponds to the second stage. So, uh, this is how we can uh, say uh, and distinguish the different uh, stages. In case of the weld joint stage 1 does not contribute much uh, uh, towards the uh, failure of the component because uh, um, most of the time discontinuities uh, and uh, the rough and high rough due to the high roughness of the weld surfaces uh, the very few number of cycles required for having the sizable uh, uh, crack or uh, sizable propagating crack in case of the weld joint that is why few number of cycles required for the weld joints to complete the nucleation. Uh, stage crack nucleation stage in case of the weld joints. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so a sudden fracture uh, continuing with the sudden fracture zone under the such conditions the material uh, failure occur largely due to the overloading. So, means in the third stage the failure of the material uh, of uh, uh, failure of the material will be occurring uh, due to the overloading and uh, this kind of uh, this failure may be the ductile and the brittle depending upon the type of the material. So, um, means the third stage uh, sudden fracture can occur by uh, through the uh, uh, nucle nucleation of the voids and their coalescence mechanism that is the dim uh, dimple fracture or it can be a brittle fracture uh, depending upon the nature of the material. Uh, while in the, in the second stage we will be able to see the typical beach marks 
or the striations corresponding to the uh, growth of the crack in, in each load cycle. So, material of the high fracture toughness allow the second stage uh, stable crack growth to uh, occur to a great greater extent so that uh, so as to delay the commencement of the third stage means uh, the fracture tough materials will delay the completion of the second stage and uh, which in turn will help us in improving the fatigue life of the uh, component so if if you see in respect of that if the crack is uh, present in the component and the load is fluctuating so the two factors are combined like the uh, the stress uh, the fluctuation and uh, the presence of crack in terms of the stress intensity factor uh, which is uh, composed of uh, the, the, the sigma pi c, pi c is the half crack length for the internal cracks and c is the o for and for open cracks c is the crack length. And uh, so, if we relate uh, the stress range uh, the combined uh, effect uh, of the stress fluctuation in form of stress range and the, uh, the crack size which is present in the component in form of the stress intensity factor range and its effect on the crack growth rate. Then we can see that uh, for a certain very uh, narrow uh, uh, fluctuation in the stresses in form of stress intensity factor range um, uh, for a given crack size there would not be any. Uh, 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 the, uh, any growth of crack means the crack will remain pro non propagating for this uh, range of the stress intensity factor. The stress intensity factor is nothing, but it indicates the combined effect of the stress fluctuation in form of a stress range and the, um, and the presence of the crack. So, uh, and the crack size which is present in the component and which is uh, normally represented by the, uh, the sigma r uh, under root uh, pi c. So, sigma r indicates the, uh, the stress range and the pi c is corresponding to uh, the pi is coefficient and the c is the crack length so, uh, means half crack length for internal crack and uh, the full crack length for the open crack which is presented at the surface. So, uh, for this stage 1 uh, the crack is non if we see uh, the crack growth rate versus the stress intensity factor plot. Then in this plot, uh, in stage one, the crack one will be and uh, crack will be non-propagating, and then the stage two, the crack will be growing at the very stable manner, and the stage three, crack growth rate will will be occurring at the increasing rate. So in the first stage, uh, if if if, there is, if the crack is already present, it will remain uh, non-propagating type, and then it will be growing in very stable manner. So this. Uh, uh, mainly, uh, the fatigue life of the component is uh, dictated by the, this rate at which the crack growth occurs in the second stage. And um, uh, higher is the crack growth rate, lower is the life of the uh, component under the fatigue conditions. Uh, then, uh, how uh, we, we can identify the residual life, uh, residual fatigue life when the crack is growing? We know that once the uh, fatigue crack nucleated after the first stage, it grows with the increase in uh, with the increase in number of the load cycles and the slope of the curve showing the relationship between the crack size and the number of uh, number of the fatigue load cycles indicates the uh, the fatigue crack growth rate and it does not remain constant. So, if we see here this plot showing the relationship between the number of uh, load cycles and the uh, crack length. Uh, so, if you can see the crack length is uh, increasing with the in, uh, increase in the load number of uh, increasing the number of load cycles and the slope is continuously changing which is suggesting that uh, the crack growth rate is continuously changing. Uh, the crack uh, growth rate uh, which uh, can be observed from the slope of the curve continuously increases with the increasing number of load cycles. Initially in the second stage of the fatigue fracture crack growth rate increases gradually in a stable manner. Now the factors affecting the fatigue life or the fatigue performance of the weld joint. So uh, if we uh, try to see uh, that the specific factor related with the welding that uh, uh, are affecting to uh, the life of the component under the fatigue conditions. Uh, we need to see that there are many factors affecting the one or other stage of the fatigue fracture as far as the uh, weld joint is concerned. These are the service load, uh, the material related parameters and the environment. 
So, the fatigue, fracture, fatigue behavior of the weld joint is no different from the unwelded base material except that weld joints have the many unfavorable features and uh, these unfavorable features which are adversely affecting the performance of uh, uh, fatigue uh, of the performance of the weld joint under the fatigue conditions uh, include the weld joint configuration. Uh, for example, the fillet welds offer very poor fatigue life as compared to the groove butt welds that the type of uh, and the, the whether the joint is carrying load or it is non uh, load carrying type. Uh, for example, if, uh, if, uh, if we can take up the, a particular case to understand this, here say uh, this is the plate uh, and having um, the T joint in which weld has been made like this using the fillet. So, if, if the load is acting on this member only and load is not acting on this member, then this will be the, the weld joint will be the non load carrying type. So, effect of uh, effect on the fatigue performance uh, of uh, this weld joint uh, due to the development of weld uh, will be uh, very limited. But if the load is, uh, if the weld joint is the load carrying kind, so here in the load is act, in this case load is acting only in case of uh, only on the base material. But if the situation is different and the second case, if the component is subjected to the load like this say another load X is acting in this another member then this load will be taken by the weld joint. So, in that situation the, 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 the weld joint is expected to the carry the load. So, load carrying weld. So, the, uh, the performance of uh, the weld joint which uh, is expected to carry the load will be very adversely affected as compared to the situation when the, um, uh, the weld joint is just developed, but it is not expected to carry the service load. So, depending upon the case, uh, the, uh, uh, the effect of the weld joint on the performance of the assembly will be different and with, uh, depending upon the case whether the joint is the load carrying kind or the non load carrying type. Then stress ridges in weld joints uh, frequently have the stress ridges in form of the ripples present on the weld surface in as welded condition, uh, presence of crater at the end of the weld zone or the, the weld toe uh, and uh, the, um, the sometimes the cracks in the heat affected zone, discontinuities in form of the porosity and inclusions are commonly present and these uh, frequently act as a, uh, the stress razor. Uh, and the presence of uh, these discontinuities in form of uh, the stress ridges facilitate the easy nucleation of uh, uh, the crack in the stage 1 and thereby they uh, uh, significantly reduce the fatigue life of the component. Similarly, the presence of residual stresses weld joint uh, uh, we know that because of the differential heating and cooling tensile and uh, the compressive kind of the residual stresses uh, are developed in the weld joints and uh, the presence of uh, these stresses. Uh, depending upon the nature of the external load, uh, increase or the decrease the nucleation and uh, the fatigue fracture. For example, uh, the similar kind of the residual the stresses similar to that of the uh, external loading uh, will be adversely affecting the fatigue performance of the component. For example, if the weld joint is having the tensile residual stresses, then weld joint it will be performing very badly under the tensile external loading. But the opposite kind of the uh, residual stresses from the external loading will be helping to improve the fatigue performance. For example, the development of the compressive residual stresses in the weld joint will be uh, increasing the fatigue performance under the tensile loading. Then the surface hardening and the softening of the heat affected zone. So, as the surface hardening like uh, increase in the hardness of the surface uh, will be uh, decreasing uh, uh, will be uh, decreasing the uh, uh, will be decreasing the nucleation of the crack, uh, especially in the heat affected zone and in the weld region uh, because of uh, the increased number of cycles required for uh, nucleation of the crack. But if the softening is taking place either in the heat affected zone and in the weld zone, then it will be facilitating the crack nucleation stage because of the easy uh, micro level deformation by the slip. 
Similarly, uh, the regular and the rough surfaces will be facilitating the clack growth in the initial stage and thus they will be adversely affecting to the fatigue life. And uh, in inhomogeneity, which is invariably present in the weld joint in respect of the composition, metallurgical characteristics, corrosion and mechanical behavior, further uh, facilitate uh, the nucleation stage and the crack growth stage and thereby these adversely affect the fatigue performance. So, uh, because of these uh, un, uh, the, uh, unfavorable uh, factors related to the weld joint, in general weld joints usually offer the lower fatigue performance than the base metal and the extent of the decrease in the fatigue performance uh, is determined by the severity of the above factors uh, which are present in a given weld. So, how far there will be reduction in the uh, fatigue life of the component due to the welding? that can be up to 0.15 times of the fatigue performance of the base metal of the corresponding base metal depending upon the joint configuration and the other well related factors. So, as far as service related factors are concerned, service conditions influence the fatigue performance of the weld joint mainly in, uh, include, uh, including load and the trend of the variation. The fluctuation in load during the loading can be in different ways and uh, this fluctuation is observed in respect of the type of stresses, uh, maximum stresses, minimum stresses, mean stresses, stress range, stress ratio, stress amplitude and the frequency. The tensile stresses adversely affect the fatigue performance as compared to the fat, uh, compressive. The compressive stresses sometimes even decrease the, uh, the fatigue fracture tendency and improve the fatigue life. Uh, similarly, the increase in maximum stresses and the minimum stresses which will be increasing the stress range will be adversely affecting to the fatigue life. Uh, the, in, uh, the mean stresses uh, of the tensile kind increase in value of the mean stress of the tensile kind will be facilitating the crack growth and thus reducing the fatigue life. Increase in stress range will be increasing the uh, fatigue uh, will be re reducing the fatigue life. And, uh, increasing decreasing the stress ratio uh, will also be um, uh, reducing the fatigue life. The stress amplitude, wide, greater is the stress amplitude, uh, redu uh, lower will be the fatigue life of the component. Effect of the load frequency is found to be less on the fatigue performance. However, increasing the fatigue, in general the fatigue fre increase in fatigue frequency decreases the fatigue life of the component. So, um, uh, these are the some of the param, uh, load related or the service load related factors which affect the fatigue performance of the weld joint. Uh, there are many other factors related to the weld joint like the welding procedure and the material uh, related aspects that affect the fatigue life significantly. So, um, the, those things will be uh, 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 presented in the, the next presentation uh, and uh, in the next presentation we will also try to talk about that uh, how the fatigue life of the weld joint can be improved. So, what are the various approaches uh, for improving the fatigue life of the weld joints will be taken up. Now, to summarize this presentation, in this presentation mainly we have talked about the fundamentals related to the fatigue fracture. Uh, the stages of the fatigue fracture and uh, the various uh, the service load related uh, parameters that affect the fatigue performance of the uh, engineering component. So, thank you for your attention.